guys, I am Pixel Dan, and today we are going to be taking a look at the Masters of the Universe Masterverse Hordak figure. Yes, Hordak is now in the Masterverse line, and not just any Hordak. My friends, this is Hordak as he appeared in Princess of Power. Uh, really cool how we've got some Princess of Power representation starting to hit this line right now. Um, you know, this line has really become this great way to explore all the various areas of Masters of the Universe throughout the years and kind of mash them into this one line here. And now we're starting to get some stuff from that original She-Ra animated series. Uh, really great stuff. You can see, of course, we still have that 40th anniversary of Motu sticker up here on the blister card there or on the bubble. And of course, this window box is a larger one because this is one of the deluxe figures. There's quite a bit going on in the packaging here because we do have interchangeable arm. We've got several interchangeable hands, blast effect, weapons. So lots of cool stuff going on within this box here. As we rotate around to the side, of course, beautiful artwork on the spine and even more beautiful artwork on the back of the packaging there. I love seeing Leech and Mantena kind of lurking in the background there. Hordak sitting on his throne, but of course, this is the blue-skinned white head version of Hordak as he appeared in the Filmation animation, uh, which is really exciting stuff. Cross cell at the bottom there showing you She-Ra is also in this particular wave, along with the new current CGI He-Man, we've got New Eternia, Zodak, Skeletor, and also Catra. So all of these are also beginning to hit now, which is really cool stuff. So let's dive on in and get a closer look at Hordak. All right, we got Hordak outside of the packaging. Let's bring in the tape measure. You can see the top of his head comes to seven inches high, uh, but the collar even goes a little bit higher than that. Almost about seven and a quarter inches tall uh, because of the added collar there. But up to his head, seven inches, so should fit in perfectly fine with the rest of your Masterverse figures. Um, and this guy is a really interesting amalgamation uh, of looks here. Now, he's not listed on the box as one of the new Eternia figures, but I almost feel like this could fit in with it because this is certainly like... Uh, uh, interpretation of various versions of Hordak. Now, he had the Princess of Power logo on there implying that this was a Filmation Hordak. Uh, and of course, this is the blue-skinned, white head version of Hordak that appeared in Filmation. But there's some things going on here that also ties them to the original incarnation of Hordak from the vintage toy. For example, he's got a cape. Uh, the cape is not something that we typically saw in the Filmation animated series. The cape is more a thing from that original Hordak action figure, the gray one. Um, so you can see it is a soft goods cape. It's got it's got like a uh, wing cut bottom there, almost very Batman-like. Uh, the fabric's okay on this. It's definitely better than some of the ones we've had in the past. You can see it's kind of a thin fabric, but at least it hangs really nicely, so I do appreciate that. Um, you can see right now I've got him with the cannon arm over here on the right. That's definitely a filmation accurate look. Uh, but one thing that's cool about this guy is he does have the ability to remove his arm and you can also place on just a regular arm as well. So you could have the cannon arm or the normal Hordak arms. Uh, you know, in the filmation series, he had the ability to change his arm into different weapons like that. Uh, one thing I will say about this, this joint is incredibly loose. Uh, you can see like, it's like not even really snapping in place. It just kind of sits there. Look how easy it falls out. That's a little bit concerning. I wish that that popped into place and locked a little bit tighter. Uh, also, it's worth noting that the other one comes out as well, even though there's no uh, extra arm for this side. I would imagine that it's just the way the torso was developed, that they just developed it with two interchangeable arms. Um, look at it. So like, did you see how this one just fell right out of socket? That's really unfortunate. So it's just not as tight as it should be. It is very, very loose. I don't like that at all. The cannon even fits the same way. So I don't, I think it's with the torso itself that's the problem, not necessarily the pegs on the arms, or maybe they're just too soft or something. See, it clicked in a little bit better that time. But it still, it just falls right out. I don't know. I don't like that at all. I wish that was a little bit tighter. Uh, now, the overall look of this guy is pretty cool. I will I will point out that I've got some sloppy paint on mine, and I don't know if that's coming across on here, but you can see there's some gray paint, like, splattered across the red bat on there. Uh, you can see there's, like, this really globby paint up here on on the uh, the hood that he's wearing, the collar. I don't know why I always stumble over that. And then we've got some black 
paint smeared from his eyeliner there that's also kind of splattered on his face. So it's not too bad, like at a distance, you don't really notice it. I mean, I really notice it on the bat there. Um, but yeah, that's unfortunate. I wish the paint was a little bit cleaner as well. Some of the details here are kind of cool. Like for instance, I actually really like uh, the sides of the armor here, how it actually has cut out slits in it. This is kind of cool because on the vintage toy, it was molded to almost look like that's the way it was designed, but never really had the holes in it. So I think that's a kind of a neat interpretation of that classic armor there. He's also got these huge uh, duck feet. <laughs> Uh, he did always have these kind of pointy feet like this. These do seem extra long, uh, but I will say it does help with the balance quite a bit. I love the glossy black uh, horde bats on the boots over the flat black. I think that looks really, really cool. And then the head is really interesting uh, because it is like, it's not exactly filmation. It definitely looks like it's inspired by it, but it almost has its own unique shape and look to it. And there are some added sculpted details that I kind of like. Like I love the way the ears look and everything. Um, but the head itself is like this pearlescent white. So it's very, very shiny, uh, which is something that I don't think we've ever really seen on a Hordak figure before. So it's really interesting. Honestly, he's a cool looking Hordak. Um, he really does kind of stand on his own as sort of like his own version of it, but definitely seems inspired by the Filmation series. So let's go ahead and run down articulation on this guy real quick. So that head is ball jointed. It is worth noting, you can pop it off that ball joint, just like we've seen on all the other figures in this line. Gosh, look how shiny the head is. That's crazy. Like even the blue mohawk is like metallic blue. It's pretty cool. I guess that kind of adds to like the cyborg or robotic type look for Hordak, right? So you got those joints at the arms that I just showed you. Very easy to pop them out of socket, but they do go up, down, forwards, and backwards. You got double joints at the elbows there. Uh, you can swivel at the bicep, of course. You can also swivel at the wrist and hinge at the wrist. Uh, the torso does roll around in the middle of the torso there. You can also turn at the waist. Uh, the legs are ball jointed, so they can go outwards forwards, backwards, a little bit of hindrance from his loincloth. That's actually pretty stiff. That's some stiff plastic there. So that is going to hinder his motions like as far as like getting his legs forward. It will, it'll be a little bit harder to get him in sitting poses if that's something you're looking to do. Um, you can swivel at the thigh cut. You have very tight double joints at the knees, which I do appreciate how tight those are. Swivel at the boot cut and then the big giant feet can move up and down and rock side to side. Look at that, I got a bunch more globbed paint on the side of the foot, oof. Paint Deco is just a little sloppy on this guy, but articulation is functioning pretty nice with the exception of those arms popping out of socket a little too easy. Everything else does feel pretty tight on this guy. Now he does come with a bunch of added accessories that we can talk about. Since he's in the deluxe format, um, he did come with a bunch of extra goodies. So I showed you the cannon arm already. This is pretty cool. One of the things they included is like a little robot claw hand that can plug into this. Um, it's interesting because it does make his arm way too long so it's kind of goofy looking in my opinion they did this exact same thing in the classics line and uh, it looked goofy there too to be perfectly honest um, but it's a different peg so it's much thicker than the regular hands so it is only meant to plug in to this cannon arm here i just keep knocking this guy over um it is only meant to plug into there, but it is a nice tight fit. So that is something different that you can do with the guy uh, to add, change up his look. He also comes with a blast effect. It's uh, like this red kind of glossy blast. I wish it was like translucent. I think it would have looked a little bit better. Uh, you know, as it is, it's fine, but I haven't been too incredibly thrilled with the blast effects just because they, I don't know, they look like, it looks like he's just shooting like globby red paint or something out of the end of the cannon but it's there so you've got that as an added bonus if you want to uh he actually seems to be holding it up just fine it's kind of heavy so i would be worried about this drooping on your shelf over time if you're going to display him that way but as it is i mean he's actually holding that up just fine which is really cool all right then of course if we go back to his normal arm here um you can see i've got like closed fist over on the left. So he does come with two closed fists and then he comes with two open hands. The one on the left is much more of like a regular gripping hand while this one on the right has got like the extended finger and everything. So you can get that for some different poses there if you want to. Uh, but this just pops right out of socket like we've seen in the past. You got the little peg there. You can pop the new one in just like that. That's actually a nice tight fit. And that way you can change up the look of the figure. Now for weapons, this is pretty cool. This is like a new version of the classic Horde crossbow. You can tell that it was inspired by the vintage toy. 
um, but it is designed a little bit different. The shape is different. Still clips onto his wrist, but they added this like laser bolt in here. Now it's non-removable. It is just part of the look of this, but I think that's kind of a neat little effect there. Um, this is again, not something he really used in filmation. This is definitely inspired by the vintage toy. There's that arm popping out again, but you know, you can clip it onto the figure if you want to. And that's kind of cool. It's very classic Hordak to have that crossbow. And then he comes with this shield, which is really cool. It's got the horde emblem on there. It's actually dry brushed with silver. So you've got these like kind of shiny specks on there. You can see the silver kind of in the eyes on it and around there. That's really neat looking. I actually like this quite a bit. And then you can see he's got uh, just the handles on the underside that just fit over the arm. The front one's a bit tight. It's hard to get it over the hand. And I've even tried doing the thing where like you take the hand off and then put the hand back on through here. It's, it's really difficult to do. It can be done. So, you know, it just takes a little bit of finagling, uh, but it is a cool shield. It's a cool accessory. And I'm glad that we got something a little extra thrown in here. All right, guys, it's comparison time. So I think the most appropriate figures to display this one alongside of are the blue version of the Masters of the Universe Classics Hordak and the Filmation version also from that line or from Club Eternia, whatever you wanted to call it, Club Grayskull, I guess it was. Um, so these figures are all in the same scale, but this really shows you the difference between the three. That one on the far right, the Filmation one, is much more inspired by the actual look of the cartoon version. So that's how you can see where the Masterverse version definitely kind of is inspired by it, but is not exact. So really interesting. We actually have three pretty neat looking Hordax when you see them all lined up here. And there you go, my friends. That's a look at the Masterverse Hordak. All in all, this is a pretty decent figure. Uh, the only thing I really, really don't like about it is how loose those arm joints are. I am very worried that over time, those are gonna completely wear out and they're just gonna not plug into the figure anymore. Um, I don't know if they're all gonna be like that, but if yours is, I would probably be careful about switching out the arms too often, just because you don't want to wear that joint out any further than it already is. I also wish the paint was a little cleaner, but I think it's a neat looking figure. I think I like the overall design of it. I like how he's clearly an amalgamation of Filmation and the vintage version kind of made to make this brand new updated Hordak toy. And he stands out from what we've already got in the past. So I do like that quite a bit. So this guy is starting to hit store shelves right now. He's one of the deluxe SKUs for Masterverse. I got mine through BigBadToyStore.com. So happy hunting, my friends. And until next time.